All right, in today's lecture, we are going to be covering eukaryotic cell structures. So first of all, what are the types of organisms that are eukaryotic? From our last lecture, we talked about protozoa, like this organism here. These are single-celled eukaryotic organisms. So this, again, is a paramecium. Notice that this organism has cilia around the outside, cell membrane, and several structures on the inside that we will be talking about as we move forward. Uh, if you look here at this location, this is called the gullet, and this would be where food material is brought into this organism. Okay, on our next slide, we have fungi. So we have mushrooms and yeast cells. So these organisms are eukaryotic. However, the mushrooms over here are going to be multicellular, and the yeast cells are unicellular. This is actually an image of a yeast cell undergoing cell division. So this small cell right here that is forming is called a bud, and that is a form of asexual reproduction. And then finally, we have plants and animals. So when I mentioned to you the paramecium, I talked to you about several of the structures that were shown inside. And those structures were organelles. All right, so what exactly is an organelle? Well, an organelle is going to be a small structure that performs a specialized function within the cell. So now we're going to take a look at some of the organelles and see exactly what it is that they do for the cell. The nucleus, shown here, Remember, all of these organisms are going to have nuclei because we are talking about eukaryotic. The nucleus here, this is going to be the control center of the cell. This is going to be the location where we find our genetic material, uh, the DNA. Inside the nucleus, you're going to see this dark region. This is called the nucleolus, and this is where we're going to make uh, ribosomes, which we'll talk about ribosomes in a moment. Uh, notice that the nucleus has a membrane around the outside, and this is called the nuclear membrane. Okay, taking a look here, the DNA is going to uh, be part of this material called chromatin. The DNA is going to be associated with specific proteins, and the proteins are called histones, histone proteins. And then the nucleolus, again, is that condensed region uh, where the ribosomes are formed. So now looking at the next organelle, we have our ribosomes. And ribosomes are made up of two smaller units, a large subunit and a small subunit. Okay, if you remember from our organic molecules lecture, ribosomes were going to be important in protein production. And if you take a look here, you're going to see that the ribosomes are small. They're going to be free-floating, or they may also be associated with the endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so all these little dots, these little red dots on the outside are showing the attached ribosomes. And then you may see a few smaller ones that are free floating throughout the cytoplasm. Same thing over here, you're gonna have your ribosomes that are free floating in addition to the ribosomes that are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That'll bring us to the next organelle, which is the endoplasmic reticulum. And the endoplasmic reticulum is going to be uh, of two types. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and then we have smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Over here, we have our rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, as well. Now, the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, if you're talking about the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it's going to be associated with uh, ribosomes. Uh, and it is going to be important in making uh, secretory molecules, secretions, uh, and membrane proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is going to be responsible for creating uh, lipids, like your phospholipids for your cell membranes. Next up, we have the Golgi apparatus, and the Golgi apparatus is going to be in charge of packaging and distribution. So you could think of the Golgi apparatus as being the UPS driver of the uh, cell. So again, things that are created in the endoplasmic reticulum are transported to the Golgi body, the Golgi apparatus, or the Golgi complex. 
It's three ways to describe or name the same structure. Notice over here again we also have our Golgi apparatus and the materials are going to be modified there and packaged uh, for secretion and ready to uh, be sent out. Uh, one of the structures over here, the lysosomes, these are going to be produced in the Golgi body and these lysosomes contain digestive enzymes that were produced by the proteins. So next up we have vacuoles. Uh, if you take a look at the animal cell, we have one vacuole here, uh, but there will be many small vacuoles throughout the cytoplasm of the animal cells. Uh, however, when we're looking at the plant cells, we are typically going to see one large central vacuole here. All right, so although this image shows only one vacuole in the animal cells, understand that there are many, many smaller vacuoles throughout the cytoplasm here. When you're looking at the paramecium, you're going to see another type of vacuole called a contractile vacuole. And we'll talk more about the contractile vacuole when we talk about cell transport in the next section. Okay, next up we have the lysosomes that I mentioned to you earlier. Again, these are going to contain digestive enzymes uh, and they can be used for digesting food material and also for destruction of old cell parts. Okay, so they can be used to break down old cell parts. Uh, a type of cell that is going to have lots and lots of lysosomes is going to be your immune system cells, your white blood cells, because their job is to hunt down and destroy invading bacteria. Okay, the next slide we're going to be looking at deals with organelles of energy, and this is going to be the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So these two organelles, uh, again, are similar in that they both convert energy from one form to another. The mitochondria is going to convert energy from glucose into the chemical bond energy of ATP, which is cellular energy. The chloroplast is going to be responsible for taking the sun's energy and converting that into the chemical bond energy of glucose. So the mitochondria is going to be responsible for aerobic respiration and the chloroplast is going to be responsible for photosynthesis. Okay, another thing about these two organelles, uh, why we're on the same slide here, is that they both actually contain their own DNA which is separate from the host cell DNA that they are in. So one reason why we think this is, is that these organelles we feel were once their own individual organisms the chloroplast being a photosynthetic bacteria and the mitochondria being an aerobic bacteria, that at some point throughout the course of time, be they became incorporated into these eukaryotic cells and became symbionts. And this is the idea behind the endosymbiont theory. A couple of other organelles that we need to be aware of, the cytoskeleton and the centrosomes, these are going to be materials that are made up of proteins. So these, the cytoskeleton, are going to be used for cell support, kind of giving the cell a little bit of structure and definition. Uh, and then the centrosomes or the centrioles, notice here that they're only going to be found in the animal cells and they aid in cell division. Okay, both plant and animal cells are going to go through cell division, but the uh, animal cells are the only ones between the two that have centrioles. All right, so remember that centrioles are only found in the animal cells. All right, so this is our brief introduction into the different cytoplasmic organelles that you need to be familiar with with eukaryotic cells. Please be sure to take the time to go back and review the material. Take the notes on the individual organelles as you go through, and remember that some of the slides have a lot of good information that can be useful. If you have questions, make sure you bring those questions to lecture so that we can make sure that you understand the functions of each of these organelles and which types of cells they can be found in. All right, guys, I'll see you in lecture.